All right, so today we're just doing some uh, some general maintenance on the bug, and actually, I need to uh, install a what you call it a little spacer on the uh, on this valve spring on the intake on the cylinder number four. Yeah, the reason is uh, I can't really rev the engine that high because I'm afraid I might actually break a valve because one of the valves uh, springs that valve spring on the intake on the four, on the number four cylinder. It's actually kind of loose. It's a clickety clacks, and the clickety clacks every time it comes and goes. When the spring is spinning, it tightens up, and as it spins and spins and spins, it loosens up, and it, I get the clickety clack. So I just don't want to rev the, you know, out of it because I'm afraid I might break a valve or something. So we're gonna remedy that. I'm, I'm gonna install that valve spring on the cylinder number four. So that's gonna be interesting. Another thing that I'm working on is actually, you know, I, I bought a microphone. That brand. And uh, it overpowers, my voice overpowers the microphone, so it, it goes to, you know, horrible audio. It, it, uh, it over-modulates. Yeah, let's just call it that. It over-modulates. Uh -huh. So what I found out is that, you know, because I work in this industry kind of thing, electronics and stuff like that. I'm an audio expert. Yeah, whatever. Um, I just put a couple of tapes and cover up the orifices of the mic and that seemed to take care of the the over uh powering of the uh, audio so you just got a mickey mouse it to make it work for your situation because i guess my voice is a little too powerful and i am known to ramble on and on and on and on and i usually catch myself and i just you know move on to something else but sometimes i just overdo it anyway so that's what i did and now it works perfectly so let's see how it sounds with this mic on me if i could get that little clippy thing okay the clippy thing is on so the audio is going to change from here on it's going to be a little different hopefully you guys like it it might sound a little bit more bassy or less bassy let's find out there we go we're on the uh we're working off the uh the mic so anyways i want to do this right now before I break the engine because I really want to rev the you know what out of it but I, I just I'm just afraid to do so so I just keep it under 5,000 rpms because I just don't want to break it you know what I mean so we're going to go ahead and add that shim on the valve spring on cylinder number four and that would be the intake so I'm going to get my doodads I don't have the valve compressor or the spring compressor so we're going to jerry-rig something up. I don't know what I'm going to come up with, but I need to jerry-rig something or I'm going to have to buy it, buy the tool, which would be kind of nice to have, really. I mean, seriously. So I've got my compressor already all juiced up. All juiced up. Because <laughs> we're going to hook up the hose, this hose, to my uh, compression tester hose. So we can hook up to the number four cylinder, which would be this cylinder right here, so that we can get the pressure to keep the valve, you know, pressed against the uh, valve seat. And I'm able to remove the valve doodad on the side of the valve cover. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I know I have it trying to think where I have it I think it might be here yeah here's my compression my compression tester we need that we actually we just need the hose and then I got to take the spark plug off I'll take it off right now all right so I already disconnected it I, I already loosened up the spark plug I'm just got to thread it out from this uh, type 4 motor yeah, for those of you who are looking at this for the very first time, this is a Type 4 motor. This is not a Type 1 motor. This is from something you would have in a, a van, you know, a bus, or a Porsche, which this is a Porsche 914. I got my plug out. So we're going to install the this guy in there right now. So I have it all threaded in. And I'm just tightening it up, tightening it up. Yeah, my English is not perfect, sorry. Okay, she's good and tight, right? 
she's not spinning anymore. So I'm gonna hook up the compressor to this. As soon as I get the cylinder number four, when it's on the power stroke, when the uh, rotor is pointing to, you know, to the uh, spark plug rotor cap to the cylinder number four, and this will be on, uh, what do you call it, uh, TDC. So I gotta move the, turn the engine manually using my hands. I'll turn it with using the belt. Uh, helps if the transmission is in neutral. <laughs> yeah, I did that once. Couldn't figure it out for a while. It took a while, yeah. I'm not that smart. Okay, that thing is uh, at cylinder number four, TDC. Um, the distributor cap or the rotor is pointing to cylinder number four, which would be that one. That's the one we're gonna work on. So right now we're just gonna remove the valve cover right there. This valve cover, I'm gonna bunk, and um, we're gonna work the valve that's right about here. Ha, I think I found a solution, and that's a little tiny hammer. So, <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do, right? All right. There we go. Let's see if I can get the valve cover without making a mess. And there you go. She looks okay. She looks nice and clean. So I'm not going to worry about the gasket. Gasket looks pretty good. There we go. See, it's not dropping to C because I, I just checked the, with the filler gauge to see what I measure right here. And I believe this one is like at uh, 0 0.0 five inches uh anyways oh uh, i don't remember if it's 0 0.005 or 0 0.05 inches anyways um uh, yeah it's exactly the same it never changes this never changes that never changes never changes so i'm not concerned about dropping a seat because um i've been driving it for a year now ten thousand miles and it hasn't changed at all so this spring right here i can move it you can see me actually let's see if i can get it better there we go. See how I can move that? That's actually kind of easy to do. I tried doing that over here. This one? Oh, hell no. This one, let me see if there's one. Oh, here's, here's a loose one. I can't do it. I can't do it. Anyways, so if I spin it with my hands, because I can spin this with my hands, if I spin it when it tightens really up and, it, and, and I can no longer do this, um, that's when the clickety-clack goes away. And the clickety-clack comes back when that thing spins into the loose position. And I get the clickety-clack. So we're going to go ahead and remove this armature right here for the uh, rockers. And we're going to see what we can do to actually get that thing depressed. So I can get the keepers out of there. The spring out of there so I can put the shin underneath. Alright, and uh, like I said, yeah, it's uh, 0 0.005. Anyways, it's nice and tight. It, it has good uh, friction. The engine is cold. And uh, yeah, let's see if I can focus on it. It's 0 0.005. Okay, anyways. So it never changes. I'm pretty sure I'm not dropping the seat. Okay, let's, uh, let, let's go ahead and remove this whole armature now. Because uh, I'm just wasting time here. Okay, I already got these loose. These are 13 millimeter. I'm going to put those in the valve cover so I don't lose them. So this thing should just slide out, but it's gonna fall apart. So I have to keep my fingers on the side so it doesn't fall apart. So basically the tip for the day is just put a nut through or a, a, a stud or a screwdriver or a bolt through those holes and that'll keep everything from disassembling itself to keep it intact. Otherwise it just disassembles itself and you can reassemble it back. Just pay attention how it came apart and put it back. Make sure your the open side, this open side, is on the same side that when you took it off. And that way you don't screw up. So because I'm using a uh, compression tester hose to hook up to these cylinders, uh, I need to remove that valve right there. That little valve has to come out. Otherwise, air will not flow in that direction. It only flows from the piston inward and it keeps the pressure inside the hose that's how you're able to keep your reading on your gauge so i need to remove that valve so that i get air going into the cylinder so i got my i know i keep my stuff in one location 
and yeah there it is it's this guy that I'm looking for it's got a uh, valve stem remover not a valve stem remover valve 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 remover and basically this is going to require two hands obviously now there we go she's coming out I think that's it yeah see it's the same thing that's in your tire take that out and now I can install that in the car because I just realized I put it on and then I realized oops I didn't take out the dinghy when I hooked up the compressor to it so yeah it'll it'll hook up to that side all right I, I don't know if this is actually gonna work uh, I just made this doodads out of my Chivas I call it my Chivas I don't know if it's going to work. I got the compressor connected. The air is hissing. Well, it's hissing because the uh, spark plug hole is actually, uh, what you call it, uh, leaking. It didn't seal right at the spark plug hole. So I'm just going to see if I can use this magnet retrieval to retrieve the little magnetic thingies. Maybe give this playing room. There we go. Oh god. Oop. I need more leverage. Uh, okay. I gotta change my strategies here. <sighs> Let me see what I can do. But you get the idea. Here's a good look of what I've made so far. This is just some bracket I had in my Chivas. Um, you guys following my channel know what I mean by that. My Chivas, and this is what I was talking about. I needed more leverage, so I went ahead and just added two nuts there. So I could get more pressing leverage. Um, anybody that's a VW, VW nut knows exactly what this is. It's a hockey puck for the transmission so, uh, transmission uh, gear selector. Goes in the nose cone. Yeah, it broke. It broke from there so now it's been repurposed for a vw2 how awesome so yeah this is where the nut would go and then i just go like that interesting ugly but hopefully it'll work it's not gonna work oh what did i do with the extension i don't know whatever i've got this extension That is one, two, perfect. There we go. There's that, there's the nut, there's this guy, and then there's this guy. Okay, valve spring looks fine. Okay. Okay, there's writing on this. I don't know if you can see that, but basically you see this side is side up. The other side has like some sort of a knurling uh, pattern on the back. That goes towards the head. There goes my compressor. Alright, and um, as you saw, that doesn't fit. Does not fit the... Uh, the valve seat on the head so not the valve seat the spring seat on the head it doesn't fit the diameter on this is correct for the spring but the inner diameter is not it, it it's it's too small the diameter so i'm gonna have to open it up okay whatever whatever just have to open it up so i could use it but it was specifically i ordered these oh god was it Amazon? I don't know. That's what the problem with Amazon. Be careful. Um, specifically for a Type 4 engine. Specifically a Porsche 914 engine. And it did not fit. Does not fit the center part. So I'm going to have to open it up. Enough me yapping. Let's get cracking. 
So I just took my biggest uh, step drill that I have and I just took one size up and uh, I'm going to test fit it now. I think it should fit. So the one with the knurling little lines, that goes to the bottom of the head. This side goes to the top. So right now the valve is loose because it doesn't have any pressure on the other side. There you go. All right. The spacer is good. She's in there. The last one. All right. Woo. Okay. So that was a little bit more difficult than I thought, but with the grease, it did help. She's in. She's got all greasy and stuff, but she's in there. Now let's see if we can move this valve anymore. Oh, hell no. Look at that. Arrgh! She's not moving in no more. You know what I think? I think this, this engine at one point in its life had a dropped uh, valve seat. And um, because of it, it uh, what you call it, 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 it was loose. Whoever did the valve job didn't put the spacer in there. Because when you put a valve seat in there, usually it goes in a little deeper than, than it was before. So that uh, gives me more valve, more valve here, you know loose and it loosens up the spring so you need to put a shim underneath it when you do a, a, a seat repair or if the guy is using you know another seat that compensates for you know being a little bit bit lower then you know you wouldn't need to do that but if, yeah somebody did a valve job on this it probably dropped the seat it got repaired but they didn't put the shim on the valve spring there you go it happens i guess shit happens okay I'm going to button it all up. Okay, we chacho. So I went ahead and installed everything in. And uh, it, it, everything is exactly the same. See? This thing is dragging pretty good right here on the exhaust valve. The exhaust valve should be at 0 .008 inches. And that's perfect. It's perfect. It didn't even change anything. So I didn't have to calibrate that again. Uh, let, me, let me check this one. This, is, this one should be 0 .005 inches. And there you go perfect look at that nothing changed everything's oops everything's exactly the same nothing changed all right so i'm gonna go ahead and check these well you know while i'm here and uh button it up and uh let's start it up i want to hear it see if I, I can hear that clank 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 when it's idling really really low i shouldn't do it anymore but uh let's find out all right, the uh, valve cover is on the uh, is on the Type 4 engine, so let's start it up. See how it starts. Remember, there was a clickety clack. It was like a cluck 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 cluck. It almost sounds it sounded like the rod was going out or something like. But it's not the rod. It's actually coming from the head. It's actually the valve doing that. So uh, it, in theory, it shouldn't be there anymore. But let's find out. I hear no clack. That is a good sign. Okay, RPMs. About 800, 850, somewhere in there. There is no clock. This is where the area where the clack was coming from. But this clack, clack. Nope. All right. I am confident that we have fixed the problem. I've been driving like that for over a year. Yeah, don't do that. You know, just fix it. Um, yeah, I could have broken the valve and that would have been catastrophic. And we don't want to do that. So, all right. So. That is done. We went ahead and replaced it. These valley thingies, uh, spacers. This is the tool I made. I had to make it. Um, I just put in a bar right there. Uh, you know, a square tubing. I could have I could have welded it on to make it easier, but I was too lazy. Now this is this is more or less how I did it. Just drilled a hole right there. And because I didn't have enough, you know, pressing power, you know, when I would go like this, it wouldn't press enough. I had to add those two bolts at the end 
Yeah, two bolts. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, with my new welder. Ooh, this one's TIG, MIG, and stick. It's the uh, 200. It, you can get them for real cheap at uh, uh, Tool Harbor uh, with a coupon. So that is far superior than my blue welder. So we're doing professional welds now. It make, this welder makes me look like I'm a professional, like I know what I'm doing when I'm not. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I've got an idea on how I should weld. Oh, look at that. Look at that weld. Look at that weld. Um, yeah, normally I would my welds would never look like that. That is with flux core, and it just it's just beautiful welds. Um, See, si, senor. So, anyways, uh, bug is good. Sorry, no video for the uh, oil cooler or for the um, oil thermostat. And no Sidewinder part came in, so I just figured I'd fix that before that thing goes kablooey. And good thing I did because, uh, yeah, that thing was getting ready to go. So good thing I did that. We fixed it. No YouTube -y thing came in for the Sidewinder, you know, to build my Sidewinder. So that's going to be another video sometime in the future when it comes in. That's pretty much it. Anyways, muchachos, take care of yourselves. Uh... Wash your hands. You know the coronavirus is going out there. Is, is out there. Don't put yourself where you don't need to be. Follow the rules. And maybe, you know, we'll all live. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's just the flu. We're all going to get it eventually. So no fear. And just live your life. And blah, 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 blah. Have a good one, muchachos and muchachas. See you later.